Have you ridden Western before? No. Okay. This is definitely going to go very well. Every time I make an armor review, I get people saying, why don't you cosplay it? So I decided to commit sewing, but because I'm wildly overambitious and it's never gone too wrong before, I decided to commit historical fantasy sewing. If you want to maximize the time you spend watching me crafting, sewing, or on Zoom calls, I promise it'll make sense in a minute, then you can join my patrons or channel members who have been watching the series of bonus videos, which I have now condensed. So if you wondered why I keep changing clothes while narrating, Rating. Now you know. Basically I wanted ladies in armour, which wasn't too difficult to make, which didn't preclude horse riding, that preferably also looked amazing and was in the public domain. I needed the history side of YouTube, so I asked Zach Evans, who is a reenactor and a jouster, to come up with some suggestions. Yeah. How many have you got for me? There's quite a few, because historically they loved this idea in the same way that we love it now. Are they ridiculous? Were there boob plates? Which one can I recreate? One of the problems, when you're painting a picture is how do you show which ones are the women? Very often women are wearing open face helmets in art. I can see the open face helmets. I can see the boob plates. They're yes. plates, I guess. There is no other word for it. They're also, of course, wearing almost full length skirts, dresses. You were allowed to wear armor, it seems, but you still had to have a floor length dress. Can you spot the Amazonians here? Uh, I can see particularly this lady on a horse. She's wearing a crown on her helmet. That was quite standard, um, in, like in real life as well, not just in art. And so here is the queen of the Amazons wearing a crown. Her dress here is even less kind of useful as a dress. She's obviously got to wear full clothing underneath her armor as well. So she's wearing full plate armor. She's probably, it looks like a male shirt underneath her breastplate. She's still got some bezigues, so those round um, protective plates over the chest, just to, again, mark her out as female. And she's got her face showing, uh, which again, if you look behind her, you can see all of her cavalry are also, um, have open faces on their helmets. They're looking very serene for a bunch of people about to, you know, go into battle. You know, they know they can handle it. I really like this piece. Uh, and I think it would work for you on account of the hair. Yeah, so who's this? I believe it's Joan of Arc. She's a bit less showy. So her dress doesn't have the slits in it. She's having to hoik it up a little bit to show that she's wearing full armour. I think that this is probably from an underdress. The sleeve is from an underdress and then you've got the um, the gown over the top, which is probably then sleeveless. I think I might go with this one. Now, yeah. will I make the Sabatons and the gauntlets? That is another question. I'll see if I can do some sketches of what I think the armor in its different layers would look like. If I run into trouble, um, I will text you probably with, you know, pictures and accusatory pointing fingers. This is going to go brilliantly. Let no one tell you otherwise. We have 13 days before we go on holiday. Preferably we need to have this entire ensemble done by then. I decided that making a mock-up was probably a really good idea. Why yes, I am capable of learning from my past projects. Thank you for noticing. Luckily for my Barbie Warrior Princess project, I bought a whole box of random fabric, which contained this dark green stuff, which looked actually reasonably similar to the dark green velour that I was going to use for the final project. So I ironed my random fabric, had a little lie down on it to see where my arms went, and traced some lines on it to mark the floofy sleeves and roughly where I thought my torso would be, and I cut it a bit. To the sewing machine. Having sewed it together, I discovered that I got the fit through the body right, but I haven't given my myself quite enough sleeve still. That's what mock-ups are for. Emboldened by this success, I grabbed a random piece of red fabric, which I think used to be a fitted sheet. Find the point at which it was the correct length at the front, because it wasn't really long enough to do both sides correctly. Haphazardly cut a hole in the neck, cut down the shoulders, but only part of the way for some reason. I made this part at the end of July, and it's September while I'm recording this. I do not understand past Jill's motivations at all at this point. And then I tried to figure out pleating with the help of a tape measure, pins, and a YouTube video. It kind of worked. The next day I had the velour, and apparently velour just makes you all think of Zap Brannigan, so do what you want to do. And I got to work. I cut, I pinned, and I sewed my little fingers off. And just as I was finishing the undershirt, the male shirt arrived! Okay, so the male shirt, mm -hmm. what's it called? That is a very good question. Or does I it depend? It, <laughs> I call it a male shirt. As modern people, we have wonderful things called dictionaries that tell us exactly what a thing is. 
and historically they were not around in the 15th century really. Some people would say a hauberk or some people would say oh it's not a hauberk it's a hauberjon. Historically that was kind of a lot more open to interpretation and the person actually using the stuff um, would have called it either interchangeably probably. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> it was a little tricky and it's best to cover your hair if you can, but I did eventually figure out how to put it on efficiently. Okay, how do I get it off? <laughs> the next morning I cut a big rectangle for the front of the surcoat dress thing and a smaller rectangle for the back, because I only had so much fabric and also I think only the front is pleated. Making the pleats involved a lot of measuring and pinning and ironing because basically the pleats had to have the width of the front. I'm gonna put a neckband on here. So I think we take a rectangle and we pin it on like this and then if we sew along here then when we flip it up there's a sort of collar. We're hoping for the best really. Why will you not face downwards? Assuming we can get that part to face downwards. I think that looks rather good. I have completed the floofy sleeved undershirt slash arming doublet equivalent over the top of that goes the hauberk, over the top of that goes the surcoat. It looks more like a dress than a surcoat because it is Joan of Arc and so it has these pleats, but we did get those done. And having done so and hemmed the entire thing, now I just need to try everything on, attach the front of the surcoat to the back at the top pin it and sew it, and then figure out what width the the back needs to be and cut that and hem it. Genuinely not sure that this sewing machine will sew through this many layers of tat, but there we are. Okay, that was actually relatively straightforward. Oh, this is such a mess. It's fine, it's fine, it's absolutely fine. We now need to hem this, which I think we might do with the ziggy zaggy stitch just just in case. But also, like, maybe we could not be silly and actually pin it first, instead of just zig de zagging it. This, this shoulder piece is connected here. It's a little bit messy, but doesn't matter. And then this shoulder piece is connected here. They're roughly even. There's going to be an enormous hem. Does it matter? No. People always wonder, they're like, why don't you show us more of the details of the things you make? Like, cause they look bad. If you, you know, if you get the general impression, they look great. But up close, everything's a bit of a mess. Honestly, there's a life lesson. That's some description. That, I think, is good enough for government work, as the saying goes. Where is that saying even from? I don't know. One, surcoat, kinda. A bright good morning to all. After last night's sewing session, we are doing pretty well. I'm waiting for my glue gun to heat up so that I can glue the end of this so that it stops unraveling because I tried burning it, but that was not sufficient. Apparently we need to apply some kind of adhesive. Is it a little bit weird looking? Yes, but that's okay. At least it's not unraveling and that, that my friends, is the important thing. Does it look like something that Salazar Slytherin might wear to go to war against Gryffindor? Yes, but on the other hand, we're definitely resembling the picture, so I will take it. We're gonna tie that in the back because you know, I don't, I don't, it's not gonna, I don't care, it's fine, whatever. Thankfully the craft foam arrived that evening, so it was ready to move on to the foam armour. Good morning, it is shaping up to be an absolute scorcher, but that is okay. We have our foam, we have some primer, we even have some spray paint to go over the top of that. I think I put it in the office, it's fine. So I have decided that the gauntlets and the sabatons are, are probably beyond me, but we are going to go for the hat and we're going to go for the breastplate and we're going to go for the pauldrons and those weird rectangular besagues as well. The hat seems to consist of a wide brim and then a regular crown, I guess, but pointing slightly outwards, and then there are 
four sort of triangularly shaped pieces which form the point at the top. This is my theory, this is what we're going for. <laughs> Ask me about the other stuff when I get to it, let's, let's start at the top. Actually, you know what, scratch that, let's start with the Besigue because it is just a rectangle and I'm, I'm reasonably sure that I can do just a rectangle. The Besigue was indeed just a rectangle. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I may have been slightly over-enthusiastic with the thinness of the foam used. I thought to myself, the density of the foam will make up for the fact that it's uh, not so thick. This was not the case. This was not the case. But there we are. I flattened them with a Peppa Pig book, primed them, and used an existing hat to start cutting the hat template. The nice thing about a foam hat is that even if the inside of the hat band actually looks really wretched, it's got foam edges and so it's kind of soft and forgiving. I then cut a long rectangle for the bottom part of the crown of the hat, and we were off to the contact cement races. It's my first try at using contact cement. I need to heat form, by which I mean make into a rough circle shape, my hat band, and then contact cement. And since I actually followed the instructions precisely, I was fine. Who'd have thunk? Okay, so it said a minimum of five minutes, and it has been five minutes, so that's good. What is the next step? Until the adhesive no longer transfers when touched. Okay. Unintentional ASMR. Place the items to be joined carefully together, keeping pressure applied for a minimum of 25 minutes for the adhesive to set. Okay, that's gonna be fun. But as you're doing it on the YouTube, they press it like really hard together. Like, like this. I don't know how I'm supposed to keep the pressure applied to it for 25 minutes. I guess just holding it for 25 minutes? I mean, I'm sure there must be a better way to do that. With clamps or something. Do I have any clamps? No. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's far too hot. It's just so hot right now that I can't even brain. However, the hat band is stuck together. It's not stuck onto the hat brim but that's okay. I tried to mock up the top part of the hat crown from four separate pieces using a cereal box, but then I noticed that one has a seam at the front, which is good because mine is definitely going to have a seam. And then this one, it just seems to be a sort of circle. Well, you know, a circle with a segment cut out of it so that you can make it pointy. So I picked the easier design. I mocked that up in paper and voila. No, no, don't, don't stick. To You're not allowed to stick together until the appointed time of sticking. Am I very good at putting these together? Um, no. No, the answer is no. Will this matter? Hopefully not too much. Okay, Annie, moment of truth. We're making a surprisingly short rest plate. Right. So I cut and pinned and pinned and cut and it turned out all right, actually. I did need to make a triangle shaped cut at each side to shape it properly over the chest, which did give us this unfortunate Madonna nipple armor cone bra kind of thing. But we'll sort that out in a minute. Are you supposed to wear a mask for this stuff or are you just supposed to... Stop it. And while that was curing, I went back to the hat. Will this actually work? I don't know. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat gun these edges and fold them in a bit more. Put on some contact cement. Hope for the best. <laughs> Hope for the best. That's what we're doing. Flush with success from that, I mocked up some spolders because they're really more spolders than pauldrons. They don't cover the upper chest or the armpit really at all. That's what the Besigues are for. And then I called it good for the day. It is definitively somewhat of a pudding hat. Good morning. It is just about 6 a.m. and only the cats are awake, so let's get to it and get some things done. I heat gunned my spolders and assembled them in approximately the correct shape, and then I attempted to sort out the joins. Last night I said to my husband, how do I get rid of the joins in this armor? And he said, would you like some milliput? And I said, what's that? And he said, this. So having tried it out on my test pieces, I thought, yeah, Okay, this kind of works. And so I proceeded to put it on all of the joins with the ineptness one would expect if one hasn't actually ever done this before. My husband got home and he was like, unless you sand it down properly, it's gonna look weirdly like nipple armor. So I tried doing some sanding. Obviously you have to take the primer off again, which is a bummer. And he said, would you just like the Dremel? And I said, Yes, but I've never used a Dremel before, so let's see how this goes. So I Dremeled my little socks off. To make everything nice and smooth, I also coated things in PVA glue and then primed and then painted. Just so you know, it was still flat cat hot outside. Hello. The next morning I painted some more. I used some foam so I could spray a sharp edge for the gold paint and that worked all right. And then using some of the scrap brown leather that I got in my random box of scrap leather for my scale armor vest project, 
I made some straps. I tried out some decorating techniques on a scrap piece of foam for the edging of the breastplate. I put all the bits on Mannequin Skywalker, edged the breastplate with a lolly stick, and went on holiday. I got COVID halfway through my holiday, but aside from that it was lovely. When I got back I attempted some weathering, which included using the heat gun a little too enthusiastically, and so I had to fix that with nail polish. I finished making all of the straps and attached them, and I did some weathering with black paint and kitchen roll in my bare hands, until we have now reached a very important stage in our cosplay endeavours, a stage that I like to call the more I do the worse it gets. The trick is to stop at this point and call it good. Then I spent a week on a stage combat course in Canterbury, which was extremely fun, but again, extremely hot. But I'm the nice one, you're the demon! And then, now it is time to do horse-related things. Almost time, anyway. And so you can see I have been doing things with my hair. So I'm about to leave and I've put in my contact lenses, but I don't actually have any non-prescription sunglasses. So I've borrowed these ones. I know they're for children, but as long as they have UV protection and mean I don't get blinded, it's all good. After a significant period of time on the M25, the joy, I rocked up to the stables and I found a horse. Th this is not the correct horse. This is also not the correct horse, but aren't they beautiful? After a brief consultation period and tacking up Cash, our equine assistant for the day, we had a plan. I'm wearing Jill's mail shirt and we're gonna test Cash out with me first so that then if I fall off, um, then it won't be a problem for Jill. It will be a problem for me. And they say chivalry is dead. And was she bothered? Not even slightly. But there was one additional tiny little wrinkle. Have you ridden Western before? No. So then I got on a horse for the first time since about 2003 and attempted to ride in a style that I have never ridden in before. How is that riding Western style? It's like speaking Spanish to horses. We're communicating, but not as effectively as I would be in English. So from a distance, the outfit is looking very much like um, the painting. So we might replace the um, foam cat chapelle de fer with uh, the riding hat, just to be on the safe side. How did that feel getting up in the armour? Pretty easy, but uh, it is foam so it bends and yeah. it's not very heavy at all. Okay. Because there's so much fabric at the front because it's pleated, you can in fact put it down on both sides. And then we decided to go get some shots in nature and that was nice. Unfortunately, the nature was directly adjacent to Cash's favourite place to go for a canter. She definitely wants to go for a route. She's, She's like, like oh, I go that sure, way. sure, I'll go for a canter. Sure. Jill told me to. Pictures taken and riding hat firmly back on, we went back to the stable so Cash could have her lunch. And Zach had brought some of his armour with him and I really wanted to have a go. But first, the chainmail shuffle. <sighs> Do we have the other one? And yeah. then I can comparatively weigh them. Here you go. I'm gonna try putting this on, but it's bigger than mine, and so... Jeepers! Does it have a high neck at the front or a low neck at the front? Uh, it should be a low neck at the front. Maybe the slit's in the back. If it tries to saw its way through your neck, yeah. then that was the back. That was the back, okay. Good to know. Now you gotta try and get it off. <laughs> and I'll warn you that you might end up falling over. <laughs> okay. So same method as with the aluminium shirt, okay. just with a higher centre of gravity. Okay. I'm gonna stick with my aluminium one, yeah, I think. Yeah, definitely. So these are my gauntlets. These are They're German like in style from about 1470. Um, somewhere in that decade anyway. Kind of like mittens. Yeah. Or like your night crawler, because you yeah. only have three fingers. I was thinking Ewoks. Mm. Ewoks have the same kind of hands, don't they? I feel like a Muppet. You definitely wouldn't be able to put them both on put by it? yourself though. Yeah, the second one, you definitely need a friend. <laughs> Via the magic of editing. There we go. So what's nice about them, well, they're very nice generally, but because they're leather on the undersides, it's quite easy to... You have quite a lot of movement. You can grab mm. things very easily. Like reins. Yeah. Or weapons. I have to tell you, this project was really, really fun. I don't know if it comes across in this video, but I had an absolute ball. In terms of how it turned out, I think 
it actually looks pretty good, especially as probably no one has ever made this armor before, much less made it in foam. If you'd like some historical detail on the armor, and if you'd like to see it be drawn out piece by piece very skillfully by someone who can actually draw things, I will link Zach's video below. This would also be the moment to say thank you to Zach for doing research, having access to horses, knowing how to hold a camera. I will link his whole channel below as well. If you'd like to see all of the videos which were eventually turned into this one video, then there is a link to Patreon as well, and also you can join as a channel member. Every tier gets you access to bonus videos and sponsor-free versions of my regular videos, so whatever's good for you. And you can check out the rest of his channel, which is full of interesting historically related things, including jousting, which I have always wanted to do, but you know, Maybe in a future video, right? Thanks for watching.